like 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. Shocking announcement. ICE just sent of a message to all illegals, they are in panic mode. There has been a developing contention about the utilization of the words, illegal immigrant, that have energized an open deliberation about regardless of whether illegals ought to be likened with settlers. Immigrant, up until the 1970s, was utilized particularly to depict legal migrants. In any case, incidentally, leftists had possessed the capacity to seize the dialect, generally softening the words related with culprits. As it seems to be, numerous leftists swarm at alien, generally contending that aliens originated from space. As absurd as that may be, it makes sense why they like to tame the outrage through particular language, the illegals encourage their voter rolls. Like it or not, the joke about undocumented Democrats is valid and has been legitimized on incalculable events, to a great extent disregarded obviously by the mainstream media. Liberals will be taking into crack off overdrive with the most up-to-date declaration out of the Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE, division this week. The acting director has made it clear, there's no population of alien that's off the table anymore for deportation. According to the acting ICE director, there could be as many as 12 million illegal immigrants living in the United States and 400,000 could be deported this year. Thomas Holman said the number could be even higher, but no one in the country illegally should be comfortable right now. Speaking to Neil Cavuto, Homan said those who cross the border illegally can no longer assume that one is looking for them. President Trump, basically told, us, you can now do your job, you will enforce the laws on your books. There is no alien population that is off the table anymore and we've been waiting for that for a decade now, said Homan, noting that illegal immigrants who pose a threat to public safety will always be a higher priority. Homan said if you enter the U.S. illegally, you committed a crime and the law will be enforced without apology. He also delivered a stern message to the MS-13 street gang in a Daily Caller interview. My gang is bigger than theirs and we will take them out, he said, adding that the goal is to make as good as possible on the promise of President Trump to arrest and, or deport these members of the band. Fascinating side notes. Rush Limbaugh on his national radio show has been requested numerous years what his considerations are about illegals and the allowing of acquittal. Numerous legislators throughout the years, especially those in the establishment, have perceived his impact with voters and have encouraged for him to see things their way. In an extremely intriguing selection of words, Limbaugh conceded that he would consent to advocate for pardon with one stipulation. On the off chance that allowed reprieve, said migrants couldn't vote in favor of 10 years. Appears a little cost to pay for getting to be plainly lawful, correct? Aside from the way that not a solitary Democrat would sign on for that kind of understanding. Makes you ponder. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Right Wing News U.S. House ruins Obama 344-81, this lesser-known legacy is finally biting the dust. In 2013, the Obama White House advanced a proposition to Harry Reid that was intended to compel the Republicans' turn in consenting to spend controls that Democrats felt was savvy and required. As it was, higher subsidizing for every single social program and soak decrease in the military planning. The operation was called sequestration and was something that Barack Hussein Obama never thought would be embraced. Actually, he thought they'd be totally crazy to permit such a sequester. The main issue was that Congress acknowledged it. At that point, to finish it off, Obama went on national TV to tell the country that Republicans drive the sequester. As it was, he lied. The sequester was harming in that it constrained and cut military subsidizing Huji. This was okay with the Democrats, however for the Republicans, it was a failure issue. Luckily, that piece of the Obama legacy has at long last reached a sudden end, as the House of Representatives has quite recently come through huge with a lift to the military budget plan. From Conservative Tribune, according to Politico, 
the House just passed its version of the 2018 National Defense Authorization Act with an overwhelming bipartisan vote of 344 to 81. The House bill calls for a total of $696 billion for the defense budget, well over the $603 billion requested in Trump's proposed budget and a way more than the capped $549 billion allowed under the Obama administration's sequester, otherwise known as the 2011 Budget Control Act. Of that $696 billion, Roughly $621.5 billion would go towards the Pentagon's base budget, with the remaining $75 billion allocated for overseas war funding. Some of the base budget spending would cover an increase in funding for missile defense and 2.4% pay raise for the military, more than the 2.1% that Trump had sought. According to the Washington Examiner, there is money to pay for an increase of 17,000 additional Army troops as well as funding for several new Navy ships and dozens more fighter aircraft. President Donald Trump has over and again pledged to remake our country's military following quite a while of spending tops, spending cuts and different imperatives that have left our battling power weaker than it ought to be, and the House of Representatives simply did its part to help satisfy the President's promise. How about we seek this new enactment makes up after the failures of the House Republicans recently? What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Conservative Tribune Caught. Look who stole $12 million of our taxpayer funds, now he's facing more than 20 years in prison. It's hard to conceal the perils of illegal immigration. Obviously, not those who enter the nation unlawfully are arranging lives of wrongdoing in their new nation, yet enough is to cause concern. At that point, there is a superseding rule that the individuals who enter a country infringing upon our movement laws are as of now culprits, in spite of the fact that not really fierce ones. The movement laws should be authorized, violators extradited, and the individuals who perpetrate wrongdoings in the U.S., rough or something else, charged attempted, and if discovered liable, sent to jail. It's truly not any more confounded than that. The peril of disregarding this basic rule is represented by a Nigerian man named Kevin Kunle Williams, aka Kunle Sodipo, who was extradited once, figured out how to come back to the U.S., and is presently in prison having conceded to wholesale fraud. He stole the personalities of state-funded school representatives with a specific end goal to record fake assessment forms, bringing about his accepting $12 million from the government. Kevin Kunle Williams, known as Kunle Sodipo when he originally entered the U.S., illegally returned to the country in 1999 after being expelled roughly four years before. Upon return, Williams and other perpetrators steal public school employees' official IDs from an outside company, according to the Department of Justice press release. They then use the credentials to illegally file more than 2,000 federal income tax returns, amounting to more than $12 million in prospective refunds. Williams purloined a number of official tax-related banking numbers used for refunds, even printing and forging blank checks. This is a criminal with an extremely well thoroughly considered arrangement. It's sad he didn't utilize his capacities to lawfully enter the United States for a legitimate quest for money, rather than entering the nation unlawfully and taking from the government. What's more, as long as he would live here, regardless of the possibility that wrongfully, he more likely than not chose he should vote here also. He also successfully registered to vote in all elections, local, state and federal, by fraudulently claiming that he was a U.S. citizen. He ultimately voted in both the 2012 and 2016 presidential elections. He faces numerous years in jail for his wrongdoings, this to a great extent reliant on whether the judge chooses to arrange him to serve them simultaneously or continuously. Once more, we see the astuteness of our immigration laws and the significance of their implementation. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write our thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. The Daily Call Caught. Healthcare fraud just erupts, 
she stole $800k and you can simply expect a powerful level-headed discussion when the point of welfare programs comes up. Regardless of the possibility that everybody can concur that it would be attractive for the poor to have better lives, the techniques proposed for getting from here to there are heap, and accomplishing any kind of agreement is practically unimaginable. Best case scenario, greater parts can be gathered to pass some enactment just to see it adjusted as the roll-out up of legislatures change. What we can concur on is that welfare fraud is genuine, wrong, and occupies reserves from the individuals who are really in destitution to the individuals who have made sense of how to diversion the system to profit. Furthermore, don't imagine it any other way, there are the individuals who have made decent lives for themselves by participating in illicit practices inside the welfare system. At any rate until the point when they are gotten, that is. Would you be able to envision a jail detainee figuring an approach to trick the system? Shouldn't something be said about in the measure of $800,000 in false Medicaid benefits? Incidentally simply such a prisoner, Alexis Norman, has been prosecuted for doing quite recently that. Alexis C. Norman, 46, of Midlothian, Texas, has been charged with criminal offenses resulting from a healthcare fraud conspiracy she ran from a prison that involved the submission of more than $810,000 in false claims to Medicaid, the United States announced. Attorney John Parker of the Northern District of Texas. Norman is scheduled to make her initial appearance in the federal court on July 14, 2017, before the U.S. Magistrate Judge Paul D. Stigney. There's no yearning here to show individuals how to confer welfare fraud yet you need to consider how she did this. On August 4, 2015, Norman pledged guilty to one count of health care fraud in connection with a false billing scheme she ran using two companies she owned and operated, Greater Southwest Group, Inc. and Ellis County Community Services. As part of that scheme, Norman used the identities of licensed counselors and Medicaid clients without their knowledge or consent to submit claims to Medicaid for psychotherapy services that were not provided. You additionally need to think about how this kind of stuff figures out how to continue for so long without being identified. Did she have an associate outwardly? How could she relate with these substances from jail without the reality being identified? According to the indictment that was just unsealed, Norman ran a similar scheme while she was waiting for sentencing in her previous case, and continued to direct it after she was incarcerated. The indictment alleges that Norman, who was not licensed as a psychotherapist or another mental health provider, controlled and operated two counseling companies, Janus Children's Services, Inc., Janus, and Therapeutic Outreach Services, Therapeutic. As part of the scheme, according to the indictment, Norman and a co-conspirator applied for and obtained a group of Medicaid provider numbers for Janus and Therapeutic. They then obtained the individual Medicaid provider number of licensed mental health professionals by soliciting applications for job opportunities on Craigslist but not hiring individuals who applied. Norman and her co-conspirators used these numbers, together with the names, dates of birth social security numbers and Medicaid numbers of approximately 156 Medicaid clients mostly minor children to submit claims for services that were not performed. So she had an accessory, a co-schemer, outwardly who encouraged quite a bit of this. Norman is charged with one count of conspiracy to commit health care fraud, four counts of health care fraud, and four counts of aggravated identity theft. The indictment also includes a forfeiture allegation that would require the defendant, upon conviction, to forfeit to the U.S. any property traceable to the offense. Things being what they are, it would seem that Ms. Norman will have her stay in jail expanded. Thus, she's not going to make the most of her evil gotten picks up, which on the off chance that despite everything they exist, will probably be vomited and come back to the legislature as in any event fractional remuneration for the fraud she is claimed to have submitted. Do you need to think about what number of more like Miss Norman is out there? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. U. S. Department of Justice Unbelievable! One billion dollars in social security gone, Americans furious. Since Republicans are responsible for Congress and the White House, 
the left is by all accounts experiencing amnesia. Advantageously, they are crying about Republicans doing things that they put over the most recent eight years doing while at the same time calling it their patriotic duty. They blamed Republicans for partisanship and hindrance all amid Obama's deplorable rule, yet have pivoted and utilized everything available to them to undermine the Trump organization. As detailed at Yes I'm Right, another case of ceaseless bad faith has been uncovered. The left has been occupied hand-wringing over the assumed expenses of the pending border wall with Mexico, yet didn't appear to mind that under Obama, the Social Security Administration issued a billion dollars in advantages to individuals without a legitimate SSN. That is most likely on the grounds that a considerable lot of the beneficiaries are the Democrats' most loved gathering, illegals. The organization's monitor general that directed the review has likewise said that unless arrangements are transformed, about $182 million every year will keep on being paid up to those without legitimate ID. This is no oversight, it's the outline. Democrats have known this system is loaded with imperfections, yet done nothing to settle the issues while in control. That is on the grounds that it's advantageous for their gathering to take into account installments to go to illegals and their families, on the grounds that the needier somebody is on government presence, the more probable they are to vote in favor of liberals. The present system even considers illegals to lawfully get installments on the off chance that they are speaking to their kid, that is apparently a subject. Discuss a crazy strategy. The individuals who have worked their whole lives and coercively had cash taken from each paycheck on the guarantee it will be returned one day are presently financing illegals. Genuinely, this is the embodiment of inefficiency and fumble. Much change is required, yet Republicans should figure out how to circumvent the obstructionist liberals that decline to rein in government spending. Conservatives must help the left to remember their wild false reverence and no let enable them to escape with such appalling twofold principles. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. S. I'm right.